Y'all, Ebony let Heather get cussed down to the floor because she don't know how to play the damn game of telephone. I got my notes. I hope y'all got yours. Let's get on into it. So on Leah's temper tantrum from the last episode, baby, Ray Charles could see that that argument wasn't about anything substantial. Mama was just having a case of misplaced anger over her grandmother and Heather was an easy target, okay? Come to find out, Ebony is the source of all the dysfunction, the stress, strife, and struggles in the damn girl chest to begin with, okay? Like, if you gonna play the damn game of telephone, play it right. Like, <laughs> I just don't understand. How do you mess things up that royally, gaslight Leah, and then get Heather cussed down to the flow on information that ain't even all the way faux show, okay? Like, <clears throat> it don't make no damn sense. Um, Leah ended up apologizing to Heather. Actually, before I get into that, I just wanna commend Heather for acting in such a graceful and tactful way with Leah because like I said when Hurricane Leah comes for you you have to realize like what's behind it like most of the time it's it's because of some other information is why she's acting the way she is so Heather was as calm as could be because that situation could have gone um completely left if it was one of the other ladies okay because you can't just cuss anybody down to the floor and think that nothing's going to happen back to you in terms of um in terms of that kind of altercation but Heather got in her job where she needed to and then she moved off of it so that's good you got to let her her she's like a She's kind of like a kid having a temper tantrum, if you think about it, okay? You just got to let them blow off steam. You got to let them get all the energy out, and then they come to their senses. And hell, when Leah was up in the house talking about, okay, um, yeah, I'm starting to look crazy. Let's just go, because, you know, I'm over it, and, and we can move forward. I was like, girl, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you realized, too, that that argument wasn't about nothing. So um, Leah ended up apologizing to Heather. Heather seemed to take it on um in a good fashion or whatever as a good sport or as good as you can take it when somebody done cuss you down to the floor over some information that a third party said and didn't even get your damn quote right in the first place um but you know it is what it was moving forward to the 70s halloween pageant um i thought it was cute it was a little bit um you know campy and whatnot uh i think that they had to sort of do a different type of holiday party because of the pandemic and all. So it had to be a little bit on the smaller scale, but I thought it was a really, really fun concept. And the ladies had some very interesting talents. Um, just in terms of the one that made my eyes roll the most, but um, y'all, I was hoping, I was hoping and praying, okay, that Ebony's talent didn't have anything to do with her being black. I said, girl, if, if this talent has anything to do with you being black, girl, I'm going to throw this shoe at the screen. Like, and then when she got up there with her spoken word poetry talking about the black woman in America, I was like, every damn scene can't be about you being black, Ebony, okay, girl, you got to stick and move. You got to pick and choose, okay? Every scene, like, we understand it. We get it. Now, Let's give Ebony the benefit of the doubt. Perhaps, playing devil's advocate, perhaps she had conceptualized this poem and what she was going to do prior to all the drama with Luann and the whole racial blow up. So if that's the case, child, I understand why you had to go through with the damn talent. But listen, you could have remixed it, okay? You could have done a Maya Angelou poem, okay? You could have taken some old Nina Simone lyrics, or some sort of, you know, lyrics from back in the day, some blues singer, Hattie McDaniel. Wait, I think that's the lady that played um played that role in that movie and got an Oscar. I'm all messed up. Take some old blues singer music, okay, remix it and make it into a spoken word. Anything would have been better than what you did. I'm sure the poem was nice. I don't want this to come off judgy, y'all, but look, every scene, Ebony cannot be about you being black, and I'm gonna leave it at that one. Now... In terms of the winner of the 70s Halloween pageant, 
please drop down in the comments and let me know uh, who y'all thought should have win because when they announced that Leah was the winner, I said it has been fixed, okay? <laughs> this competition has been fixed and I need a recount ASAP, okay? Because you cannot tell me that Leah's standing there with her two hula hoops doing this and she dropped it the first time okay if we're gonna speak facts if we're gonna call a spade a spade we're gonna call a spade a spade when she was rolling her kiki the first time she dropped that thing and then they had to help her get it back together so listen i understand that luann wanted to make her feel better and said that she needed that win but in my opinion the actual winner of the comp of the competition i would have given it to ramona okay let me clap for ramona Ramona about six to eight. She probably like 64, 65. Girl, I'm sorry. But you know, in my mind, you about 68, Ramona, or a good 65, girl, because you moisturize. But listen, Ramona, in all honesty, Ramona looks amazing, okay? Um, amazing for any age. And when she got down in that damn ball gown with her titties on full display, baby, and did her um, 40 push ups, let me tell you. Um, I was amazed and I was like, you better go for it, Ramona. You better do your thing, okay? Because my limit is 20 at one time. After 20, my body gives out and then I got to take like a five minute break in between. But you know, that's between me, um, my non-existent trainer and my Jesus. So moving forward, we all knew who the real um, MVPs of that damn 70s competition were. If you don't give it to Ramona, I say give it to, um, what's her name? Sonia, because it's it's hard being a mime and doing that damn Pictionary or whatever. She's playing charades and trying to get people to understand what she was doing. Um, one of those two. Drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all think. So moving forward, um, Leah's grandmother dies before she was able to see her. So a very, very sad moment. And it's sort of weird. I was kind of feeling like that would happen in my spirit. Um, just in terms of how they were setting up the episode and foreshadowing, because Leah was talking about how you know, she felt that she probably should have been there with the grandmother and um, and X, Y, Z. But the way I think of that, and I really like what Ebony said on it, where she was just like, everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. And I think, you know, I don't know her grandmother. I don't know about that relationship. But just hearing about it through the screen, it seems like a very loving relationship, a very close one. And I would like to think that Leah's grandmother will want her to be having fun and surrounded by people that care for her um, while she was going through these trials and tribulations. Because they always say that you wanna remember the people that die as you experience them when they were alive. And so if you weren't able to do that in the last days of her life, at least you can hold on to that memory of how you actually remembered your last interaction with her and, um, and take solace in that. So super sorry, shouts out to Leah about her grandmother, can't be easy and um, wish her all the best with that. So Ebony finds out about her long lost sister as she's you know, telling the ladies about her conversation with, um, with Leah and whatnot. <sighs> now, I'm not trying to be shady, I really am not, okay? So I'm gonna approach this from two different angles and I'm going to try very hard, okay? So Ebony says that she was contacted by a lady who purports to be her sister um, apparently Ebony doesn't know who her father actually is. So it's plausible that this lady might be related to her. Um, <clears throat> and so she mentioned how her mother is her only living blood relative that she knows of before this whole sister conversation. All I got to say is, um, I think the saving grace of the situation was that uh, Ebony was talking about how the, the lady said, you know, like, what are what are your, your qualifications for knowing me? How do you know that you're my sister? And she was like, well, you know, I've heard about I've heard about you just in terms of I had an older sister throughout the years. And your picture has been on my grandmother's mantle for, you know, like the longest, because I was about to say. Ebony girl, you coming up in these streets and you do not know what kind of thievery, criminals, ne'er do well as up in these streets trying to, you know, live off of your good name, trying to just pop up in your life when things are going popping for you and have their hand out. You do not give this lady any money, okay? You give her not a dime until your DNA test, okay, comes through. You need to head down to the DNA. If you want to make it a social media experiment, call up Maury Povich. 
Okay, and tell him it's going to be a special where it's not going to be a uh, you are the father special. It's going to be like, this is my long lost sister special. And in that way, girl, you get some um, publicity shine off of it. And you also find out if this is your real family member. And if she's not, then the audience can boo her ass. But I hope that this lady, the long lost sister, is, um, is legit because it would be nice you know, for Ebony to find more family, even though, you know, I talked in a prior episode about the benefits of, you know, creating your own family out of your friends, right? So you may be running out of blood family members, but that doesn't mean that the people in your life that love you, the people that you spend your time with, that doesn't mean that they're not your family too. So all I got to say is I hope the long lost sister is coming with good intentions and she ain't on some BS and Ebony, do not give her no money until that damn DNA test come through. And even after that, she needs a trial period of 90 days because that's how long it takes for someone's representative to go away and the real them to show up. So good luck to Ebony with that. Now, um, I'm going to touch real quickly on Ramona getting her real estate license. Ramona knows how to make money, and I salute her for that. Um, from, you know, her talking about insurance to the HSN to the Pinot Grigios and stuff, like Ramona is a hustling somebody, and I am here for it. This show is a platform, and if you don't come off of um, this show with a, a new business, a new lot in life, uh, an upgrade to your life, you have sorely messed up the platform. So good for Ramona getting her real estate license in New York and um, expanding her business knowledge in her business. Now, she's going to have to work on the terminology and the language behind it because when the man was talking about that the master bedrooms ain't called master bedrooms no more, I had to clutch my imaginary pearls real quick because I didn't realize it. I am the worst when it comes to realizing the racial impacts of certain languages and stuff or certain phrases that people say because I've heard master bedroom for years and I never associated it with slavery, not one bit. I didn't realize that it was... It, Maybe it's loosely related. I don't know. But instead of master bedroom, they call it the primary bedroom and, you know, primary bathroom one, primary bathroom two and three. So I learned some stuff, too. You know, on a personal tip, I'm trying to get my real estate license, too. So it was really cool to see Ramona, um, you know, starting this new journey in her life, this new chapter and me learning some information down to the millionaire, um, millionaire uh, real estate listing people. So keep it coming. I would love to see it. Now we revisit Martin the Boxer because um, Leah and Ebony done got together and decided to, you know, help Sonia on her confidence journey and making sure that she's the best Sonia she could be. I'm glad they got Sonia to loosen up, okay? Because them little tired punches she was throwing at first, these little, you know, little love taps. I was like, if you don't hit this man, he calling you all these names. He's trying to rile you up. It's all about an emotional pull. He's trying to knock you out of whatever you know things that you feel are confining your actual emotions for you to actually you know hit him hit him release that energy release that stress because lee and ebony saying that they you know pretty much are have taken sonia on as a project because they're they're virgos and virgos like projects and like you know helping people in this that and the third i know that about virgos okay baby i was in love with a sagittarius okay y'all better know that that's that beyonce dangerously in love first album i actually have never dated a sagittarius i just wanted to you know insert that in because i love that line but don't judge me because this ain't about me um but good for martin the boxer listen um hopefully he's getting some shine off of this stuff because uh, sonia said this is the first time she met him and she saw him on instagram and stuff so maybe i need to follow martin the boxer and next time i'm in new york i'm gonna you know take a little class or whatever get me some boxing stuff because i actually really liked um i don't like being hit <laughs> I don't, I don't like being hit, but just in terms of them like holding up the pads and you doing like the little one, two combinations and stuff, that's fine. You know, on a personal note, I have a black belt in Taekwondo, okay? And uh, it's probably locked up in some deep recess of my mind in terms of if I end up in a situation where I have to defend myself, it'll come back to me. But um, when I tell you Self-defense is number one important, but also just the cathartic nature of expending energy to get some mental processes out is a very helpful thing. So um, shout outs to Leah and Ebony for doing that for Sonia. So Ebony has an election party um, and I was already holding my breath because I thought it was going to be some BS. Not that the election party wasn't going to be good, but I just find myself like I'm not a very political person, right? Don't get me wrong. I vote, you know, I, I, I am a party to the political process, 
but I just feel like politics in this country, they're just so divisive um, and they can separate friendships. I feel like the last couple years have really like put some people's friendships, marriages, et cetera, in jeopardy because, you know, they have different political views. Hell, I've gotten into fights with friends over political views because I was like, I don't discuss politics with y'all. And then they wanted to discuss politics and then it blew up. Listen, I can only give you the energy that you give me back, but this is not about me. I am getting um, off track. Okay. So Ebony's election party was a very nice event. I thought it was great. She invited, I think she said she invited all the ladies. Not all of them showed up. Some of them were doing other stuff, but the group she had seemed very, very nice and seemed very respectful. Um, them damn dogs was out of control though. It was giving me high anxiety when them dogs was jumping up on the table, trying to get pieces of food and stuff, licking people in the mouth. That might be a difference between white people and black people because, um, Though I have a dog, I have never, never, never let that dog lick me in the face nor mouth. Lies, okay? Because I know what you do when I'm not looking. And hell, even when I am looking, he be licking himself and pleasuring himself and self-cleaning or whatever. Lies. You are not going to touch me with that damn tongue on my face, on my mouth. I don't want no damn bump, bump, herpes, you know, dog chlamydia. Lies. It will not be me. Um, so it was funny though, when they said that Leah's dog reflects her personality, cause he was just as out of control. That was some high class shade right there. Um, let's talk a minute about Ramona and her black friends. Now y'all will stop being surprised when Ramona does stuff for the gram. Okay. When she does stuff for the gram, when she does stuff for the damn social media, everything that Ramona does in a social media space is crafted. Okay. Um, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to, to sort of see Ramona's political views through the screen. Ramona really strikes me as a very conservative Republican and there is nothing wrong with that. I have friends that are Republicans and we are friends as long as we do not talk about the political process and our actual views. Okay. Cause then we come to blows and then it's no fun for nobody. Okay. Cause like I said earlier, I don't fight. Okay. I just like hitting the pads in the boxing, but this whole tour that Ramona is on to try to, you know, show people that she ain't racist and she got black friends and stuff. Miss me with all of it, okay? I'm glad the girls could see straight through it. That is some PR 101, okay? If you want somebody to focus on something else than what the going story is about you, give them something else to focus on. So she done pulled up this lady that we don't even know up on the damn um, Instagram. And then she got a picture with her and her new friend because she loves meeting new people, Ebony. So Leah called that thing right where she's like, listen, if you love meeting new people, why wasn't I there? Why wasn't I on your damn Instagram? So Ramon will have to take that up with her and her Jesus. Cause uh, that ain't about nothing about that ain't about nothing to do with the Lord. If you think about it now, it wouldn't be a party if Sonya's drunk ass didn't get drunk. Now I tried to give Sonya the benefit of the doubt. I really did y'all. I really did. Okay. Because I thought either she was just being super confident in terms of asserting herself and telling her opinion and saying what was on her mind. Or uh, I was looking at the screen. I was like, either she's confident or she's drunk. Okay. I ain't seen her drink one drink. So I said, let me give her the benefit of the doubt. And then when a lady said that she was actually drunk, I said, okay, this makes sense. Cause whenever Sonya get drunk, the voice get high pitched. She starts getting very, um, very involved on very specific details, right? So just in terms of her going on and on and on about Ramona and Luann, it was like, make your point and move, stick and move. And when she just kept talking about the same thing over and over and over again, like you could see people's faces. They was like, what is going on here? Is she unraveling? Now, The she must have only had one glass of wine or something because she wasn't slurring her speech yet. Mama's speech was the King's English. It was good. Okay. It was just the manner that she was acting. You knew that the alcohol was taking hold and I'm Luann in that situation. Okay. You gotta, you gotta draw your line in the sand. You gotta stick to it. Luann said, this is triggering for me. I don't like to see her in this space. I'm about to leave. So I guess we got to congratulate the baby steps of the situation because at least child, you know, she ain't drunk down to the floor, falling off chairs and stuff. So maybe this is baby steps, no slurred words. And she was pretty much coherent. So we got to, we got to get our way back to just, you know, having good conversations and being sober at things. Okay. Just, just stay in your right mindset and your right faculties. I don't, being drunk at parties ain't fun. 
I have never been drunk down to a party in my life. If I'm going to get, you know, a little bit tipsy, I do it in my apartment and it doesn't take much. I'm a lightweight, okay? So me and Sonia might be from the same trap because one glass of Riesling and I'm anybody's, okay? And I shouldn't have said that because now I'm going to be anybody's. Anywho, y'all, that's all I got to say on this matter. Um, so if you liked what I said, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Stereo, and Twitter at Dat Damn Dasher. And until next time, y'all, may we all hope to be as strong as Ramona and her arms. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.